All right. And now the other one, when the FBI tells you that the DPRK, North Korea, is responsible for the attacks on Sony, we want to know, where's the proof? Where's the proof? We weren't born yesterday. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C., our Christmas show, our pre-Christmas show. Um, and we're just looking at the, the significance. Right? It's all about the Middle East. It's all about peace in the Middle East, peace on earth among persons of goodwill. All right. So who's the main threat to that? This Christmas, it's ISIS Czar Allen. We want him out. We've certainly got to make sure that the American people know and the world public opinion know that this monstrous design is constantly, these spiders are weaving this web of deceit. And these are the people who are waiting. They're itching for a false flag that they can then use to lift and shift. No more bombing of ISIS only bomb Assad. That's the goal. Bomb Damascus. Well, you know, that's sort of where Christianity started, right? St. Paul, who organized it on the road, right? they want to bomb that. So the answer is no, right? You call yourself a Christian, you mobilize. You call yourself a person of goodwill, you mobilize. You call yourself uh, someone of uh, positive impulses. You want to play a positive role in History, you mobilize. Fire ISIS Czar Allen. Fire Allen for Christmas. Fire Allen for Xmas. You get the idea. No to Allen. Oust him. That's the Christmas present the American people and the world and the Middle East uh, actually need. And don't be um, deterred by these fakers and gatekeepers like the Scahills, the Greenwalds, and the Amy Goodmans, um, they're in a big trouble. But now we have the <coughs> the FBI um, with their immense credibility. The FBI now tells us that it's now it's confirmed that the North Korean regime hacked into uh, Sony. Well, uh, I'm from Missouri. Show me the proof, FBI. I remember your shenanigans on Wen Ho Lee, the Atlanta uh, Olympic bombing. Uh, the FBI crime lab, not so good there, and on and on. And now we've gone from Mueller, from St. Paul's School, <laughs> to Comey. And of course, Comey is a torturer. Comey is a graduate of the torture memorandum. So we're going to have the Comey agency tell us what's actually going on in the world. I'm sorry, you know, we're not, we're not total fools, are we? We want to see some proof. And I would say that to Obama. Don't believe it. Time to back off. Don't go any further. So I would say those are the three, right? We could easily do a campaign against Saki. I think people out in the world have been have been doing that, right? Um, the uh, the various um, uh, you know international media have actually focused on her quite a bit. I hope that some uh, you know, at least some uh, you know. Left liberals or libertarians will come forward and say they don't believe the FBI. That's not exactly a profile in courage to do that. Uh, we also should remember, you know, the U.S. was boasting about Stuxnet and uh, Olympic Games, right? The so-called uh, computer viruses that were allegedly introduced into the Iranian computers controlling the Iranian nuclear centrifuges, we're told by the New York Times. Uh, you know, once you start doing that, the golden rule of international relations, whether it's torture or computer viruses or hacking or whatever it is, so whatever you do to the other side, the other side will do to you, and they'll be fully justified because you've done it to them and you've even done it to them first. How a country that boasts of shutting down 
Iranian nuclear centrifuges with Stuxnet could whine when a bunch of Hollywood degenerates and airheads have their emails read. Well, I don't know. There is also this funny question of the overreaction of the Sony, right? Why why call off your movie, right? That's a lot of money. Normally, you they wouldn't do that. The uh, The idea seems to be that there are other items in those emails which are so compromising to these Hollywood hypocrites who run the studio. And we're talking about um, this uh, charming lady, right, uh, Madame Pascal, I think her name is. you got to wonder where that movie came from. Hollywoodism, right, Hollywoodism. We've had some interesting things about it. I've written a, an essay about that not long ago. Um, there's always this idea, Santa Monica and Hollywood, and the branch of the Rand Corporation, which is there, that actually, I guess it's the headquarters of the Rand Corporation, and to what degree the scenario movies coming out of Hollywood, right, The Lone Gunman or The China Syndrome, any number, are actually coordinated with events, and in, including false flag events, happening in the world. But the bottom line is the Iranian regime is much too... Labile to mess around with. It's not worth it. We don't care about the Hollywood airheads. We don't care about this movie. Uh, Hollywood uh, obviously feels that they have the right to spew filth out into the world and they'll never be pushed back. Well, here it is, pushback. It's, it's from an ugly source, I guess you'd have to concede. But um, what the heck, you know, they're, uh, they're on this earth too. And uh, it's just the way it is, right? Uh, there's going to be pushback. So I would, the main thing is back away from this. We don't need World War III for the sake of Sony Pictures and their filthy scenario movies, right? And we don't care what the Hollywood airheads think about all of these subjects. Now, the other question we have to deal with is the uh, economic situation. Uh, during the course of this year, since about June, the price of oil has gone down by about one half. West Texas Intermediate, North Sea Brent benchmarks down about a half. The Russian ruble is also down about a half. Uh, there has been now in the past week this emergency move by the Russian Central Bank. Between Monday and Tuesday, they added 6.5% to their um, prevalent interest rate. That got them up to 17%. This is a terrible mistake. Uh, the person, I think, behind this, there are a number. The head of the central bank is this woman, Nabulina. We have attacked her as part of the neoliberal cabal. Remember, the neoliberals in the Kremlin include Nabulina, the head of the central bank. The leader of the faction is Kudrin, the former finance minister. We've also got um, Siluanov. I think he's the current finance minister. And Shuvalov, who is uh, another top Kremlin official. Uh, we should also look at Anatoly Chubais and the Gaidar Foundation. This is Yegor Gaidar, the uh, late uh, privatizing nomenclatura uh, representative who brought oligarchy and suffering back to the Russian people. The shock therapy man working for the IMF. Uh, we don't want to forget German Greff former uh, um, official from Clinton. Um, this entire group of neoliberals are sabotaging the obvious thing to do. What does Russia need to do? Exchange controls and capital controls. Exchange controls mean you want to take money in or, above all, out of the country. Fine, maybe you apply for a license from the Treasury. You can't do it with the click of a key on a computer or your cell phone you got to go through the, tr the, tr the finance ministry exchange controls capital controls you want to take a large sum of money out of the bank good you get a license what are you going to do with it where is it going to go and monitor it and then provide the documentation that you did what you thought there is no doubt uh, the country of Malaysia under the powerful leadership of Mahathir Mohammed back in 1998, instituted capital controls, and they did better than any other country out there in riding out the Asian contagion of 98, 
to 99. And Russia can and must and should do the same thing. Ride roughshod over the neoliberals, fire a bunch of neoliberals, and go for the Glaziev solution. And the leading edge of Glaziev is don't waste your foreign exchange on defending the currency. Let your exchange controls do that. Back in a minute. Welcome.